Troublemakers, how's everybody doing today? I hope you're doing wonderful. Today we're doing a little bit different just because I'm having some technical issues with my camera, uh, so you won't see my pretty face. But we're going to be talking about the Node MCU. This is a, a project where I'm going to connect the Node MCU ESP8266 to the Adafruit cloud and we're going to log um, temperature humidity data. So, quick tutorial overview. We're going to look what you need. We're going to look at how you're going to connect it. We're going to see what you need to do to connect it to the cloud. Um, and we're going to put it to sleep um, just because data loggers don't always need to log. And if you want to connect it to a battery, you want to know how to put the Node MCU or any ESP8266 to sleep. And we're going to compare the Node MCU with the Adafruit Huzza, um, just because it's actually interesting to see, uh, especially to do with power consumption. So what you're going to need for this is a breadboard, of course. Uh, you're going to need a Node MCU. You're going to need the uh, the DHT11/22 sensor. I use the 11, but if you're going to use this in a real-world environment, I would go with a DHT22. And you're going to need some jumper wires, I think about 6 or so, to connect the Node MCU to power and all that wonderful stuff, and connect the DHT sensor to the Node MCU. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the DHT sensor library. We're going to use one that is specifically designed for um the uh, ESP8266 so how we're going to install it you're going to open your Arduino IDE you're going to go to the sketch menu you're going to go to include libraries and uh, manage libraries option then the library manager will open uh, this is a, a newer feature if you have never used it uh, it's a lot easier than like downloading zip files and then copy or pasting them into the correct directories this does that all for you so any library which is accepted by the Arduino IDE will be in there so in the library manager we're going to type in a search bar the one over here we're going to type in DHT and press enter. That's going to show us all the uh, DHT libraries that uh, are available. And this is the library we want to do. The ESPX, which is basically good for uh, the ESP8266 uh, and uh, the 32. And for the uh, DHT11 and 22. Uh, when you found this one, I'm using 1.05 version, what you do is you click on the more info and if it is a library that you already have installed, you can update it to this version or you can press the install button and install it to this version. After you installed it, we're going to go to the code. Uh, sorry, we're going to look at how to connect it first, of course. So, the DHT11 uh, or 22 is a fairly simple uh, sensor to connect. With the grid of the sensor facing you, the first lag is basically uh, 5 volt in. The second pin is data out, which we connect to D2, which is in the Arduino world, digital 4 pin. And then the last two pins we connect to ground. And then we connect the ground and the 3.3 volt of the ESP8266 to the rail here. And everything is connected. So let's look at the code. The code is real straightforward. So we include the library. We create the object that we are going to communicate with the sensor. And then in the setup, all we do is like this is just like setting up the serial we're printing a nice little line and then we say here connect the dht 
to digital pin 4 which is on the node MCU D2. Then in the main loop what we're gonna do and this is the reason why I'm using this sense uh, th th this library is this here. This line here will slow everything down because the DHT sensors are notoriously slow when communicating with uh, controllers on 3.3 volt and that's what we're running with the node MCU. So this line here will slow things down in an appropriate way so that you can get and read the data from your sensor. What we do is we get the humidity and we store it in the humidity uh, uh, variable and we get the temperature and the temperature by default is in Celsius. Um, so then what we do is uh, we check that the, the sensor is okay and then we just print the humidity and the temperature. If you want to print the humidity, I mean the temperature in Fahrenheit, the library has a two Fahrenheit uh, converter. So what it does, it takes this uh, value of this float and turns it into the Fahrenheit. And then there is a different way to look at the heat index and the uh, humidex. Uh, when you're dealing with um, um, with uh, the uh, with Fahrenheit, so you see, really straightforward, simple. And there you go. That's all you need to do to connect the DHD1122 to the Node MCU. Um, you can download this uh, the sketch. As always from my blog and the link to my blog is in the description below and you want to download this library uh, from the blog I mean not the library the, the sketch from the blog so now what we're gonna do is we're reading this temperature and humidity data and we want to store it in the cloud so that later on you can retrieve it or look at it and Adafruit has their IO based cloud and how that all works uh, the easiest way to do is to go to this link and the link is in the blog and the blog uh, link to the blog is in the description below and it will take you through how to create a feed. A feed is basically um, where you store the data in, into a feed. It's really important we're going to create two feeds that you name them this, that you call them temp and humidity and this uh, tutorial will take you through it. Really good tutorial. I, I, I don't see a point in me trying to create a better tutorial. They did an amazing job. So, the next thing we need to do is we need to create, I mean, install the library we're going to use. Uh, and we do that again the same way as we did the DHT library. We're going to go to the Arduino ID, we're going to go to Sketch menu, to the Ink include library options and manage libraries we're going to type in the search bar Adafruit MQTT and we're going to install this library uh, this version or higher after we've installed it let's look at the code so you can download the sketch uh, from the blog um, and this Catch basically uh, is to connect to the Adafruit cloud. Um, it's a good thing to have the sketch open uh, so that you can pause the video and actually look at the code because I cut it a little bit down just to make it a, a little bit more compact of a, of a, a tutorial. So the first thing here, the include ESP8266 Wi-Fi handles everything to connect to your Wi-Fi router and the two next ones are just to connect to the MQTT or cloud server of Adafruit and then this one you recognize um, 
the, the one below you recognize because that's the one for uh, the uh, 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 for 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 the, the temperature humidity sensor. Now. The first thing you're going to, when you underneath this, the first thing you're going to notice is a section where we're going to type in the name of your router and the password to your router. Um, so in between these quotation marks, you basically type in the name of your router, the SSID of your router, and the password to connect to your router. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to look at a section that is con uh, configure uh, the connection to the Adafruit cloud. Uh, the first thing that you're going to notice is over here it gives you the, 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 the server name, the port you're going to use. Uh, you can use a secure port. I'm not using it because this is just an example. Um, the username. Now that is important and your AIO key. Those are two really important and they're not the same as mine and you have to look them up. So what you do is you go to the this uh, uh, internet address, you log into the Adafruit cloud and then what you do is you're going to click on view AIO key. In here will be the username, you'll copy it and you'll paste it into here and the same with the key. If the key is not there, you can either create or regenerate the key and then copy and paste it into here. After you've done that, you basically have set up everything you need to connect to uh, the cloud. And we basically uh, set up the object that connects to the cloud with this Adafruit client. And if you notice, it's got all the, the, the stuff in there that we set up, like the IO server, the port, the username, and your key. Um, this here is basically to keep, it knows what the state of your Wi-Fi connection is. Uh, now we're getting to a little bit a more complex thing. So I told you that you needed to create two feeds. The one called TAMP and one called Humidity. So what we're doing is we're creating an object to publish the data to these feeds. So we do that with this. Uh, um, so we're going to have uh, an object that we're going to use to to publish data to the temperature to temp feed and we're going to have an object called humidity which we're going to uh, publish to the humidity feed now if you named your feeds different then the only thing you need to change is this part here you can name it whatever you want, but if you have changed it, you need to change the code to reflect that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi router, and we do that in a setup function. Uh, it's really simple. we got a while loop, and a while loop basically continues until a condition is met. And so this loop, first thing we're doing is we say begin the Wi-Fi connection and we give it our the name of our router and our password. Now sometimes it connects really fast, sometimes it does not. This here, this loop is sort of to prevent us going through the code without actually being connected because then nothing else will work. So this while loop will go through its loop until the status gives uh, this result here you got some more possibilities that it could give so if you actually get through the loop and it doesn't do anything um, you can troubleshoot it just by seeing actually what the status is that it really gives not a really good system but that's the only system we have so to prevent that we actually go and get into an infinity loop because that can happen 
just sometimes uh, these controller boards uh, even though all the information you have provided is correct the, the Wi-Fi connection is in a weird state and it won't connect so it will go through this loop for 10 times when the counter reaches zero it will basically reset the board and reload everything and retry and that will continue on until it actually connects or until you fix what the problem is if there is a problem so the next thing we do is we're going to go to the loop main loop and in the main loop the first thing we do is we go to a function called mqtt connect and the mqtt connect function is actually what connects you to the uh, Adafruit cloud so now you've been connected to your Wi-Fi router so now we're going to connect to the Adafruit cloud now the first thing you see is this here is it basically this here if statement um, if MQTT connected returns a positive you don't need to reconnect and then this return will put you back into the main loop if it's not it goes to this while loop which is basically the same idea as you have with the Wi-Fi router um, the connection doesn't always instantly happen like so because you're talking to somebody like thousands of kilometers away maybe and it will take a could take a little bit of time so this uh, loop will continue on until MQTT connect actually gives a response of zero and that basically means that it's connected that the status is good it will go through this loop five times if after five times it still did not connect we reset the uh, controller board the ESP8266 the node MCU in this case and we will start all over again um, if there is an issue this here will print to your serial port I mean your serial monitor and gives you an a reason what the problem is and so that you can troubleshoot but we assume that everything is fine and we go back into the main loop so in the main loop the first thing you see this here is old school stuff we already talked about it it's for the DHT sensor now here we finally get to the point where we're going to publish and this if statement is purely for troubleshooting um, because when you have when you haven't connected your ESP8266 board to the uh, serial monitor you're not going to see this but basically the if statement is if this doesn't return a zero um, then something has gone wrong and it will actually print a line say that it failed now what we do here is remember we created these objects for the feed so we got a temperature feed where we're going to publish the temperature in Celsius and we got the humidity feed this is going to publish to uh, the humidity uh, feed so that's straightforward you can see not fairly complex simple to do so after we published there is a delay for 30 seconds and then we do it all over again it goes through the main loop again tries to connect if it's connected it doesn't need to connect if it's not connected then it will connect now some cases you want to use this in real life and you want to put it somewhere where you're going to connect it to a battery so we want to put this thing to sleep so how do we do that um, with a real Arduino it's a fairly complex process with the 8266 it is actually a really simple thing on the node MCU pin D0 is what we call the wake pin and we're going to connect that to the reset pin so uh, every uh, ESP8266 uh, version has this it might be in a different place but 
really it's that simple you connect the d zero to the reset pin so what happens is this we call this uh, esp deep sleep so we're at in the code says a delay we remove that delay for 30 seconds and make it a second just to give everything a little bit of a chance to catch up and then we say esp a esp deep sleep 30 e6 so that is uh, 30 seconds and the this deep sleep function works in um microseconds and that e6 basically means a 30 with six zeros if you not completely understand that go to my blog I have a better explanation how that works so in the deep sleep mode everything turns off except an internal clock that basically counts 30 seconds the moment 30 seconds have happened is it will pull this wake pin to zero low uh, or ground however you want to name it and then it pulls this reset pin to low uh, zero or ground and when you pull this pin low what it does is the same as if you would press the reset button it will reset the hardware and it will load everything again and connect send the data and goes to sleep um, I will at a later date write a more comprehensive thing about about uh, the, the sleep functions on the ESP8266 but for now and for 99% of the time you're going to use the deep sleep function so you see that's so much easier than with an Arduino uh, the last thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, compare the node MCU to the Adafruit Huzza that's the board that I normally use the most so what we're going to do is really simple. I'm going to compare them. So the Node MCU has a built-in FTDI chip. What that means is it has a USB chip on board and you can basically connect the USB cable directly to your computer. With the Adafruit Huzza, you need an FTDI cable. Um, when you look at the size, the Node MCU is a lot larger than the Adafruit Huzza. Not a bad thing or a good thing it's just a thing now but when you can start to look at the power consumption uh, that is where you start noticing that the Adafruit Huzza is a way better option if you're going to connect it to uh, a battery if you're not going to connect it to a battery the Node MCU is a really good option one it's half the price of the Huzza and it's an easy board to work with but if you notice that when it's awake it uses 90 milliamps whereas the has 70 milliamps when it's asleep it uses 21 milliamps and the has use only 0.15 milliamps and that's because of the FTDI chip FTDI chips are hungry creatures and it has nothing to do with the uh, ESP8266 chip it's just something that's on board so it doesn't get turned off when you turn off the the, 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 the ESP8266 controller and this is why you can uh, see it's almost 20 milliamps more that the FTDI chip runs well there you go I hope this was informative if you like it please subscribe to my YouTube channel or uh, follow me on Facebook the link is in the description below or go to my blog and subscribe to my newsletter and you receive a monthly newsletter and up-to-date what is happening I hope you enjoyed it have an amazing day and bye for now